Yo, what up, what up, what up, what up? It's your homeboy, Cowboy Crunk, coming to you from Kabul, Afghanistan. Your war daddy. Uh, just bringing you some up-to-date stuff. I've probably done too many videos on this guy, but it is somebody. He's moving up uh, in, in, the, in the draft possibilities, uh, I think, for the Cowboys as well as other teams. So I wanted to get this video out and, and get with you guys, show you where I stand on this situation. Um, and I wanted to show you there's, there's been quite a few people putting out his, his videos for his performance, his ability, you know, pre previous Heisman Trophy, trophy candidate. He switched to running a uh, wide receiver, uh, Jalen Hurd. Um, and since he's done that, he had 69 catches. Uh, he still played quite a bit of running back at Baylor. And, and these are the videos I'm showing you guys to show that he's willing to do whatever the team wants. And, and first of all, I start with his MVP trophy from the Outback Steakhouse uh, game, 2016. He, he also was in that game with uh, Alvin Kamara, which was his the backup running back. Uh, when Jalen Hurd left, Alvin Kamara took over. So uh, they kind of split time. He was between the tackle runner and Alvin Kamara ran outside. And that, that's part of the reason he was really ready to move on. But here we go, guys. Um, but it's also very exciting when you, when you get to honor um, an individual and an individual performance that, that we saw today, uh, especially after the coach's great words about being a, a game time decision. So um, as has already been announced um, on behalf of Outback Steakhouse and um, the Outback Bowl, our MVP rushed for 24 times for 130 yards, one as a touchdown, sophomore. and that is Jalen Hurd. So now, congratulations, Jalen. As a sophomore, he was going to come out of the draft, but he did not want to play running back. He was a top 10 pick at, in 2016. He was going to go into – now he dropped all the way down into the fourth or fifth round and is moving his way back up as a receiver. So I'm going to skip through some of this. You can't really – you can't really hear the questions. Uh, anyways, I got my notes here. And I'm gonna do a video later on the Demarcus Lawrence situation and the possibilities. Well, hamstring pull at the beginning of the week, but uh, you know, I did treatment all week and uh, you know, I put it in my mind that I was gonna play either way. And uh, that's why I did not. Uh, I ran around a little bit and I felt pretty good. And I've got, yeah, like you said, I got treatment all week, but there was nothing really that was going to stop me from playing. Even if it hurt, I really didn't care. They were talking about how he prepared, what he did. He did extra, uh, extra massages, extra work in the pool and stuff like that to prepare. He said he was playing no matter what. It was awesome. And uh, you could tell that the, we were really like wearing on him. And, uh, okay. And, uh, you know, our, our solid play, you know. I'll get, and uh, go back to that drive, you know, I was just thinking the whole time, I was just like, Some he's such a teammate, he's, he's talking about how, how he knew him or his teammate uh, we won and then needed to make this, a play. This win going into the offseason, you know, it's just a confidence booster, and, uh, you know, we have nothing but to just get better from now, so. One second, guys, the good stuff's coming, I just want to skip to the end. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a decent stiff arm, and, uh, you know, I was just... Trying to get everybody live. I, get, I, I like yeah, that, you know, really can't prepare for it. He has a six stiff arm. He presents itself. He just trying Yards to after the catch. I'm posting my video. I got a video posted in the link. There's a link Absolutely. in the description. We're already prepared for it. The sickest stiff arm I've ever seen, uh, where he stiff arms a defensive end and flips him over backward. It's it's a video I did about a month ago. It was amazing. And, uh, you know, I want to compliment the Outback uh, on their hospitality. You Check know, we had out. a great time. And uh, Tampa's a great city. And, uh, you know, I just I feel very blessed. I also want to thank my linemen, um, how well they play tonight. You know, yeah. up holes for me. And last but not least, uh, thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, I'm a very blessed individual, and I just uh, when I get awards like this and times to get up in cameras like this, I just feel that I'm very honored. Thank you, everybody. Cool guys. I want to check out the next video. This one is uh, this this video is prior to him starting at Baylor. Um, that of course was while he was at Tennessee. This next video is, uh, let's see, video two. Okay, this one is actually while he's at Baylor. I'm going to play, play you guys the transition video between him moving from Baylor. Uh, now look at this. Come on, that's the stiff, stiff arm video, and that's the stiff arm video. Okay, I, I must have lost that video. That's great. No, here we go. It's this one here. 
Here we go, guys. Sorry about that. This is the video prior to the transfer or during the transfer, his off-season video. 2017 football season, the Baylor Bears got transfer, Tennessee transfer Jalen Hurd, but had to sit out one season due to transfer rules. He possesses a major threat on offense, a running back at Tennessee, but now he's switched to wide receiver here in Waco. Andy Knight has more on what to expect. He gives the explanation of why he's making the move. Switching positions on the gridiron is an arduous task, and for Jalen Hurd, he embraced the challenge and used his year of sitting out to the full capacity. I had time after um, I had stopped playing for a bit to really focus on receiver and really get that mentality and kind of learn the perimeter a little bit. Expect 110% from Hurd this season, as Matt Rule said that he is one of the team leaders. Uh, you know, to me, leadership comes in all different forms, right? But you, you need to have an offensive skill player that just plays with such amazing effort that everyone wants to be like him. You know, really the guy for us that does that is, you know, a lot of times it's Jalen Hurd. Look for Hurd to perform at an elite level. Playing a little running back there. He became a wide receiver to prolong his football career. He did it to prolong his career. That's it. A player who to get injured from a non-football activity. He's an intelligent athlete who puts his body first. Well, my body was not really feeling that well at running back. I had a lot of injuries at Tennessee, and um, the switch has been great for me for to rest my body and then um, I'll be able to play a lot longer I think in his three years at Tennessee he compiled a just under 500 reception yards on 67 catches for six touchdowns the winning play of that drive so even at running back he was playing a little receiver catch, since he's used to looking for holes and outrunning and defenders trying special to bring teams. him down Jalen Hurd is one of our 2018 players to watch or so that's prior to him moving to Baylor. That was during the transition. He did have to take a year off. But during that year, he got to work on his route running. He got to work on the transition uh, of, of picking up the wide receiver position and, and playing that uh, as his key role. So now that is his key role. Uh, and here's, here's some of his stuff. This is another interview. And, and this is where this is the end of the season. This is towards uh, almost in December. It's late November. And he's actually talking about no, I I, I want I want to do whatever the team needs. If I got to play running back, I play running back. If I got to play wide receiver, I want to be where where the where where I'm needed on the field at any time. He even played a little defense. Here we go, guys. Jalen, how much defense have you played? Defense? Yeah. I played a little bit my senior year. So you a little bit of senior weren't year. Uncomfortable getting out on the field for that last play? No, I was. But he, he came yeah, in and played field. safety. <laughs> Jalen, how, how a little bit exciting was that? I know you're already on to Iowa State and all that, but just as a team to see the hard work that you put in to close out a game like that, what do you think that meant for this team? That was a great team. We're definitely coming off a hard loss versus West Virginia. You know, we needed a bounce back win. And 150. We're glad we got to it. How do you like, uh, you know, you're, you're running the ball a lot, you're catching the ball a lot. Do you like doing those kind of versatile things? Love it. Like doing it all. Just anything to help, honestly. Yeah. What's the transition been like for you? I mean, waiting as long as you did, coming into this program, and kind of, you know, outsider, I guess, so to speak. But uh, what's the last couple of years been like for you? Uh, I mean, it's been a grind. You know, it's all it's always been hard, you know, having to wait and then sit out. But it was good. He didn't like sitting out, but. Like that. So I think it's been a, a good season. I think um, we, um, we have a lot more to go and a lot more to prove on, and hopefully we can finish out these last three. Uh, you, uh. I, do you feel like you've become maybe more focused as the years gone on? It's uh, just as far as receiving things you have to do out there, running patterns, catching the ball. Uh, honestly, I've always been focused since mm -hmm. about sixth, seventh grade. I've always kind of put it in my head that I just I'm gonna work as hard as I can and just try to work anyone. You just see Denzel practice every day. He's talk. He talked in post game a little bit about lack of confidence at times. Seeing him all the time, seeing him make that play, how huge is that? You think for his confidence and, and the player he can be moving. Exactly, I, and there's a lot of times where I've I've went up and I told him what he can do. You know, it's kind of just put his head down and work, and don't really worry about the outside stuff. And um, was, I actually kind of said him said something to him before that series because I knew that we were both going to get up. Any details and like. Okay, back there, right there, he was talking about he had another one of the players on the team just didn't have the confidence, and you know, he kind of stepped in and said, "Look, man, I need you to make plays too. The more plays you can make, it you know, they they work together. He's really a team focused guy." Uh, and and this is the last statement I have, and then I'll then I'll sum it up real quick, guys. This this uh, this is just the type player he is, and he's talking about his uh, his trans his transition from running back to wide receiver here at the end. Your assignments. 
So when you did transfer and you were working with receivers, do you think you were down being a running back? No. So uh, I knew that I was going to be, you know, kind of put in different roles. Rule told me, I mean, to be put in different roles where I can run the ball as well. So. So that was that was one of the things you liked about coming here, then I guess. Absolutely, absolutely. Any knowledge really of Ames or Iowa State for that matter, and, and what y'all had? All right, that's it, guys, for the video. But but what he was saying was he knew when he transferred that he was going to play, still place a running back, and that's what he wants to do. He wants to be put in any position he can to help the team. And, and he stated that after the draft uh, or after the draft proceedings have started. Not the draft. The draft isn't done yet. But since the draft proceedings have started in his pro day, he went and got his knee scoped. Uh, that's why he missed the combine. But he will be ready for his pro day on April 2nd. So I'm looking forward to that. I just wanted to show you guys what type of player he looks to be. Really intelligent, really smart. That's why he made the transition to wide receiver. He wants to play football long term. He doesn't want to be that uh, you know five, six year running back. And we, we've seen it with Chris Johnson. We've seen it with with uh, you know too many running backs. Uh, Demarcus, uh, um, Demarco Murray. A lot of guys we've seen come in and out. A lot of a lot of guys like Bell. These guys. Seriously, you get a six, seven year career. Adrian Peterson has been a guy that's kind of opened that up a little bit and went longer than normal, but it's something he wants to prevent for his self. So that's the reason for the move, guys. And this is my deal, especially if we get the Demarcus Lawrence done deal done or whether we don't, we're going to get a, a draft pick for him. So I think that resolves because we have the assets of Demarcus Lawrence or the asset of that trade. Our, I think our defensive line is good. I think the only position we're really needing anything is safety. So at 58, if we go safety, this guy's there's, there's a good possibility at we, we solve all of our problems at 58. That means then we can move on to best player available. At 90, if this guy's there, I think he's the best player available, whether we want to get a corner, a wide receiver, a running back, or whatever. This guy is standout. He can play the running back, and he doesn't mind. He's a slot receiver. That's 90% of what he plays is slot receiver. He can line up in the X, and uh, he's strong, yards after the catch. He's just a solid pick at 90, and that's why he's really moving up the board. I don't know if he's going to be there, but if we get safety at 58, we solve all these problems on the defensive line. Whether we keep Demarcus Lawrence or we don't, we're going to trade him. We're going to get a first or second round pick for him. We replace him with that first or second round pick, and we move on. At 58, we get safety. And then uh, at 90, hopefully this guy's there. And he really, really, really will help out our receiving core, our running back core. He's almost like a small tight end at 6'4", 230. So that's my sale for him. I've sold him enough. Uh, it's, your, it's your guys' call to see if you guys agree or not. I don't think we need a receiver. But at, at 90, we will be in the position to take the best player available. And this guy, if he's there, he, he is that guy. That's my opinion. Thanks, guys. Take care. Cowboy Crunk out from Kabul. Peace, fellas. Good luck. Enjoy the draft. Just focus on your details and uh, your assignments. So when you did transfer and you were working with receiver, do you think you were done being a running back? No. So uh, I knew that I was going to be, you know, kind of put in different roles. Rule told me I mean, to be put in different roles where I can run the ball as well. So. So that was that was one of the things you liked about coming here, then I guess. Absolutely, absolutely. Any knowledge really of Ames or Iowa State for that matter? So what he was just asked was, when you transferred to Baylor and they started using you at running back, were you okay with that? And he said. Of course, that, that's what I wanted. I wanted to be used when I could. I want to be valuable to the team. So this guy is solid. He's well-rounded. I keep hearing people say, oh, he switched to running back, and he's not He's not wanting to be running back anymore. No, he is completely fine with – he wants the ball in his hands, whether it's receiving or running. Uh, how, how do you like uh, – you know, you're, you're running the ball a lot, you're catching the ball a lot. Do you like – doing those kind of versatile things. Love it. Like doing it all. Just anything to help, honestly. Yeah. 